Hi, Stonebridge. Pastor Keith and Pastor Brandon again with Ask the Pastor. This is one of our favorite things uh, the past few weeks. We're so excited um, to be able to answer questions that you have. And uh, hopefully it's been a blessing to you. It's been a real blessing to yep. us just to be able to talk about these things, especially you have no idea sometimes how many takes we do, making sure that we don't look like idiots, which is always super fun. And never really accomplished. No, it's all, they're, always, they're always great, though. Um, but maybe, maybe we'll have a blooper <laughs> roll at some point. Uh, but probably not. Uh, today's question is submitted to us by Heather Taylor. Thank you, Heather. Um, and this one is pretty exciting for us. Out of curiosity, how do pastors go about preparing a sermon? What does that process look like? And how far ahead do you plan a sermon series? Brandon, you want to start? Yeah. So um, great question. Fun question. I'll start with the, the planning ahead of the sermon series. Um, and, and I think the first caveat is that probably every pastor does this a little bit differently, sure, right? There's, right? There's no one right way to go about some of these things. For me personally, I like to try and plan as far ahead as I can. So uh, for a sermon series, I'm usually thinking at least six months out where we're going after this next series. Like already today, I was working on what I'm thinking about for the fall, probably Galatians, not sure yet. Um, trying to think through uh, series that are going to both expose us to both Old and New Testament, working back and forth. We want to sit under the whole counsel of God. Uh, series that are going to help us where we're at in the life of our church, right? And so uh, Philippians helping us to kind of clarify our vision and calling and mission as partners in the gospel. Judges uh, getting us into the Old Testament, helping us think about um, what it looks like to follow Christ in a world that's chaotic, and little did we know how chaotic things were going to get, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, so thinking shepherd-wise and thinking broad exposure to Scripture and then far enough ahead that we can be kind of thinking where we're going um, at least a few, several months in advance. Yeah. So. Yeah. And with that, too, like once, so there's the planning ahead in terms of what, and then there's the specific, like, week to week, how yeah. do you go about preparing a sermon? And, you know, Brandon and I and pretty much everybody else, like there, there are a variety of ways in which you would go about preparing. So I'll just maybe, I'll walk through mine, Brandon yeah. can walk through his. Um, first of all, and I think Brandon would say this too, uh, like preparing for a sermon is really, a, it's years and years and years because it's, it, we don't just come to a text that week and go, well, never read this before, <laughs> <laughs> this is new to me, and Let's then we hope. just start grabbing ideas. The, the idea is that, you know, we've been in God's Word enough to be able to sit down and synthesize, and as we're reading mm -hmm. through yeah. passages, we're bringing up into our minds, God's bringing up, oh, there, this passage is a cross-reference, or this mm -hmm. uh, is a direct quotation from somewhere in the Old Testament, so having the, the whole counsel of Scripture in mind when you come to a text yeah. is, that's years and years of, of processing. Uh, but for me specifically, I usually, um, uh, he's going to be a lot more structured than I am. That's just how we, how we run personally. Um, and uh, so, but I always begin the process with reading through the passage of scripture as many times as I possibly can, even just over and over and mm -hmm. over, trying to be familiar with it, uh, looking for words, phrases, keywords, things that jump yep. out at me, um, contextually making sure that I'm in the right context in whatever passage, whatever book I'm in, biblical context. And then writing down as many uh, thoughts as I can, meditations on that, you know, through praying through those things. And then I'll start to consult um, some of my favorite uh, commentaries on that particular mm -hmm. passage. And then from that point, really, um, it's it's just trying to figure out with our congregation, you know, what yeah. what does our congregation need from that passage of scripture that God wants to deliver to them? Because that's that can be pretty specific. Mm -hmm. So just praying, God, how would you direct me to uh, put these thoughts out, give me your words, give me your heart, um, and then try to get out of the way as much as possible mm -hmm. um, in, in actually writing it yeah. out. So how, what, what's your process? Yeah, like? it's honestly pretty similar in terms of the, the different steps we'll go through. Right. Um, so, um, you know, Monday morning is when I try and do most of my kind of focused study in that particular passage. Um, thinking about context, structure, if I can, I'm working in the original languages, um, trying to kind of follow the flow, the flow of thought and, and zero in on the main thing that the author's trying to get across to God's people, um, and uh, kind of collecting that together. 
And then Tuesdays, we've been doing something, if the coronavirus has put this on halt a little yeah. bit, but we've been doing something this last year that's been really fun, getting our preaching staff and some of our elders and other teachers in the church uh, together to kind of look at the text that's going to be preached that uh, following Sunday. We mm -hmm. start by reviewing the previous Sunday sermon, giving feedback on that, and then working in the text together. That has been hugely helpful for me, uh, listening to Keith's insights or Robin's or other people's as we kind of wrestle together. And then from there, I'm probably looking at commentaries, um, both technical ones, if there's something that's mm -hmm. tricky and I'm not quite sure what it's doing, or uh, oftentimes preaching commentaries are really helpful for me. because. Yeah. It's hard, the process of, of preparation that's harder for me is actually getting it across. Like the study part comes pretty natural. I have to work twice as long to clearly communicate. And so Wednesdays is just writing. Um, that's kind of most of my day on Wednesdays. And, uh, and, and for me, I articulate in the process of writing rather than in the, mo in the moment of speaking. So if I were to stand up here with a list of bullet points, uh, none of you would be well served or well fed. Um, and uh, my wife can always tell when I go off of my notes because I just start circling and, and, and such. So um, so writing it out is really critical for me. You're a little bit, you, you kind of think in bullet points and your, your outline will probably be looser yeah. when you step into yeah, the Yeah, nobody right? is well served by me writing it out. I think the last time I wrote one out, I think it was nine pages long. <laughs> So, so yeah, you can see that, that we're wired differently, yeah. but um, so much of what's important in preaching, though, is not just the process, but the conviction. Uh, the conviction that it's God's word that must be on display, that it's what you need from us on Sunday is not our opinions right. or our yeah. ideas, Boy, right? that's the truth. Uh, <laughs> what you need is for us to stand up and say, thus says the Lord, yeah. and, and so that that the kind of sermons we're preaching are those where the main uh, idea and, and message and aim of the text is what's driving the message and aim of the sermon mm -hmm. every week. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then, you know, the other thing we didn't talk about is, is thinking about how this text, um, at least uh, another step I kind of skipped, how does the gospel show up in this text right. and how does the gospel come through this text? Right. Because we want to make sure our application is both connected to the congregation where you're living but right. also applied through the message and power of the gospel that right. it's the spirit of god that enables us to obey this word and so there's all sorts of different you know it's fun to kind of stop and think through what all goes into that um because there's lots of different questions that we'll ask each week of, of the text and of ourselves as we're wrestling with it but. yeah and sermon preparation really is an act of it's it's an act of part of worship yeah not just an act of teaching mm -hmm. um, in some circles it's viewed probably more as instruction or you know help me know what yeah. i'm supposed to do uh, whereas when brandon and i approach sermons we're always thinking how is this going to magnify christ yeah. like how do we how do we make christ look the way that scripture presents him beautiful when some like yeah. drawing that the gospel yeah. draws us in and changes us and motivates us to live out that change yeah. that's the that's where we're always going to land so when we talk about sermon preparation we're not just thinking uh that it's an intellectual exercise it's Absolutely. not it's not just a, a primary intellectual it's it's a worship it's a yeah. position of the heart and again like presenting jesus is beautiful to our congregation absolutely it's really easy to approach the sermon as just information that i need to learn right right and if i don't remember it uh then the sermon wasn't valuable <laughs> um and, and I'll be honest, I don't remember what I preached three weeks ago, all right? So, so it's not just information. Obviously, it should be information in there. But it's also preaching both what you said for exaltation of God and transformation of lives. And so it, it's a better analogy um, than, a, than a lecture is a meal. Like, I don't remember what I ate for breakfast last week, but I'm pretty sure that meal was uh, instrumental in my nourishment and health. Mm -hmm. And so feeding on God's word as God's people, um, making much of Christ together, seeing the beauty of Jesus in the gospel and being changed by that and helped to put it into practice. Application matters, but it's got to be an application that comes from the heart of God and the grace of God. Um, 
Yeah, and ultimately for the glory of God. Yeah. So hope we hope that makes sense to you. And again, there's there's just so much breadth in how we would go about doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is fun. You know, one of the one of the best things uh, about being in a place where we team teach is just drawing from each other's yeah. strengths. Whereas, you know, even either in our preparation or in our delivery, we're going to go about it different ways. But it's a beautiful thing where God takes. Um, uh, flawed instruments and <laughs> allows them to work together, uh, yeah. hopefully for his glory. So um, hope that gives a little bit of insight, Heather, and anybody else who might be interested in that. Um, but uh, like, yes, let's always look at sermons as an opportunity to make much of Jesus mm-hmm. um, and uh, to walk in the gospel uh, after that as much as possible. But uh, love to hear more of your questions. Keep sending them our way. Uh, and we can't wait until we get to hang out with you guys in person. Uh, that's what we are just praying for and, and laboring for right now. So uh, hope to see you soon.